Tell us a little bit about Big Ten Can and how you can help sales organizations sharpen the effectiveness of their sales team. Yeah, so, so what we do is very simple. It's pure sales enablement straight across the board. We look at that world as three things. The first thing is how do you train and coach your sellers to be the best that they could possibly be in the shortest time possible? The second piece of what we do in sales enablement is make sure that your sellers have the right content and the smallest set of content. This is very important when they're out there actually meeting with prospects. Part three is what we're doing right now, actually interacting and engaging that sales engagement. So we do all three of those things in one single package. What do you do to make content more fun? We've invested heavily uh, in AR, VR recently, and people absolutely love it. That's augmented reality and virtual reality. We've been doing things like helping companies do virtual sales kickoffs and virtual reality, which I think is insanely fun. I don't think you could get more fun than, than like literally showing up at somebody's office and strapping on a VR headset and walking around an airplane, right? For example. So, you know, that's one example that I currently just absolutely love. Another um, example we do, which I'm currently really digging, uh, is something we have called Voice Vibes. I don't know if you've heard about this, but uh, it's an AI that actually understands how you're perceived by other people. So what we learned using that AI on hundreds of thousands of salespeople is that uh, if you sound confident, just simply sound confident and the AI judges you as confident, you're 13 times more likely to get a deal done. Rusty, as a CMO, you make a lot of decisions about uh, marketing budgets. Uh, how do you justify the budget uh, to the CEO and also how do you keep uh, a relationship uh, positive with uh, all your salespeople on, in the company? I'll start with keep relationship positive with the salespeople. Uh, you know, so Garrett, I've, I've worked in sales enablement for 13 years, um, you know, I, and I've done sales myself. So I get it. It is people underestimate how hard the job is, especially for people like SDRs. My God, sitting there folk calling people all day long in this environment must be horrible. And, you know, and what we try to do is just continually give them data to show them what their prospects are doing, um, whether that's through intent or whether that's through, you know, different things they're interacting with in our content. We try to always feed them data that helps them make sense of the world. So that's how I try to keep, you know, the relationship with the sales right. team on the right, right between marketing. This first question, how do I justify budget? I mean, this is honestly the hardest part of any CMO's job. Um, typically the CMO has the most budget in a recession. We're the first ones caught, right? I mean, you can just look at, it's, by definition, what is the, the spend that is not getting spent? It's marketing, right? Because you're going to try to cut people last. You're going to cut, you know, things like marketing first. So everything that I have to justify now is completely data-driven. We have seen the leading indicators that these industries are, are acting correctly still. They're still spending money. There's still a possibility they're going to spend money with us. Um, and this is where we should place our bets. Marketing is not coin operated, okay? You do not know where you're going to get your best leads from, whether it's a Twitter, uh, you're talking to your brother-in-law at a dinner or at a concert with, you know, Gerhard and I rocking out with our guitars. You have no idea, right? So right. you really begin to know, think about where you're going to place your bets. And you got to really, once again, I'll go back. Baseline, baseline, baseline. I always present the baseline to the board and to the CEO. I always say, here's what we know. And here's where we're going to place our bets. And most importantly, here's where we're going to put stops along the way that we're going to stop and measure and say, is this effective, right? Or are we going to stop it and place our bets somewhere else? What advice do you have for sales leaders, uh, the way to think about training and coaching in a recession? Well, one, I would be thinking about coaching more <laughs> and, and really, really, really making sure you dial in the way that your, uh, your guys and gals are talking to customers, people are going to run from your prospecting calls, right? Because if, if they don't hear, how are you going to help me? Think about it like that. If I'm training a sales guy today, I'm first of all saying that person on the other line is worried about their job. 10,000 people cut from Salesforce, Salesforce right? Yeah. Everybody in your sales team should be aware and you should be training them how to deal with someone who's worried about losing their job. Right. So how do you not lose your job? You provide value. Right. So everybody in your team needs to be trained and coached on how your products and services are going to provide that individual value, how that individual can then sell that value up the chain. And then how that even how the individual can sell that value in a recession. Right. Giving that ROI data that we've been talking about, right. they're going to have to be ultra proactive and coached on how to deliver ROI. Yeah. From an investment perspective, you get a lot better ROI if you uh, train them and coach them and uh, motivate them to stay with you. Absolutely. Microsoft uh, put out a research on this, right? They said 76% of employees would stay at a company longer with better learning and development. 
Awesome. For anybody who wants to learn more, go to BigTinCan.com. Mm-hmm.